Hello and welcome to Serena Speaks and today we're on chapter 14 of the BNF which is vaccinations. So in this video we'll do some background knowledge and um, we'll go through some background knowledge first then we'll go through different types of vaccines that are available and towards the end of the video and I think the main take-home message from this video will be to learn which age group you need to give which vaccination to um, and using different mnemonics we'll try and remember it. So with vaccinations, so with immunoglobulins, there's two main types. There's human normal immunoglobulin and there's disease specific immunoglobulin. So the main difference between the two is that with the human normal immunoglobulin, this is prepared from thousands of blood donations and it will contain immunoglobulins and antibodies of different viruses and diseases that are already prevalent in the population. For example, uh, measles, mumps, rubella, varicella. Whereas the disease-specific immunoglobulins, it's what it says, it's disease-specific. To these taken from human um, donations that have high levels of that specific antibody and then using that trying to generate this specific immunoglobulin. So those are the main two differences, um, the main differences between those two. Now, in general, with vaccinations, you want to store them between two and eight degrees, so in the fridge, and keep them away from light. Now, we have passive immunity and we have active immunity. Passive immunity is essentially you're getting a vaccination. So you're injecting the antibody into the disease antibody into um, a patient's plasma. Whereas with active immunity, that can be acquired by vaccination or by a disease. And there's four main types. There's live attenuated, there's inactivated, there's detoxified e-toxins, and there's extracts from microorganisms. So the live attenuated, you can get that in the form of a virus or a bacteria. An example of a virus would be your MMR, your measles, mumps, rubella. Um, with a bacteria, it would be BCG, so bacteria, BCG. With your inactivated form of virus, an example would be influenza. Your detoxified e-toxins, they are produced by microorganisms, for example, your tetanus virus and your extracts of microorganisms. Um, they may be derived from organisms, um, for example, the pneumococcal vaccine. So with inactivated forms, usually they'll need a series of injections known as boosters. Um, with those that ha are HIV positive, they can receive live vaccines, for example, BCG, MMR, um, varicella zoster. With regards to anthrax vaccines, anthrax vaccines are recommended for patients who deal with infected animals, for example, lab staff. Just think anthrax begins with an A, animals begins with an A. With regards to your BCG vaccine, that should be given intradermally. And you will know if that's been successfully given because usually two weeks after it's been given, you will get either a mark, a spot, a dot. It will basically leave its mark in some form or another. Um, and when it does that, then you know it's been successfully given. On to diphtheria. The dose of diphtheria that is given usually depends on the age. So if they're over 10 years old, you actually give a low dose. If they're under 10 years old, then you give a high dose. So adults, for example, they would only need a low dose. It'd be recommended um, for patients to get a diphtheria vaccination if they're going, if they're traveling to an area that is highly prevalent in diphtheria, especially if they haven't been immunized in the last 10 years. And with diphtheria, you usually need to give boosters. With regards to exam questions with vaccines, um, majority of them will involve uh, looking at an SPC. So they'll give you the SPC in the exam, but you need to know where the answer will be in the SPC. So to save you from having to read the whole SPC, because some of them can be really, really fat documents, get used to now knowing the format of it. So if it's a question on side effects and they give you an SPC, you'll know exactly where to find the information. If it's regards to indications, again, you'll know exactly where to look in that section because all SPCs are laid out in exactly the same way. So, so long as you know the format of it, it will make your life so much easier in the exam when they do give you a question with an SPC, which is very likely with a vaccines question. Moving on to Haemophilus influenza B. So if the child is under one years old, they're usually given a course of three doses, which are given one month apart from each other. 
Um, boosters will then need to be given, usually combined with the meningococcal C vaccine. If the child is between one and 10 years old and they've not been previously immunized, then you would just give one dose. And that again is usually given with the meningococcal C. And if the child is over 10 years old, then you don't really need to give them the vaccine. It's only if they're at specific high risk. For example, if they have sickle cell, anemia, or they're being treated for malignancy. Now onto hepatitis A vaccine, those that should get the hepatitis A vaccine are, for example, people who are working directly with the vaccine, um, people who work with primates, parental drug abusers would need it, um, those traveling to a high risk area of hepatitis A, and um, patients with severe liver disease. A booster would be, need to be given six to 12 months after, and another booster might need to be given after 20 years if the patient is still at risk. With regards to hepatitis B, there's um, many groups of patients who would be at high risk of hepatitis B. So it's those individuals who would be targeted and recommended for. So, for example, those that have haemophilia, those that have chronic renal liver failure, um, patients, again, who are um, parental drug abusers and their sexual partners, and even babies born to mothers who had hepatitis B during pregnancy. Those are just to name a few that would be at higher risk and therefore it would be recommended that they had the Hep B vaccine. Now onto the human pampiloma virus, the HPV virus. So there's two main brands. There's Cerovarix and Gardasil. And the two shouldn't be interchanged. The same one should be used throughout the whole course. Cerovarix is effective in preventing cervical cancer. Gardasil is effective in preventing cervical cancer anal cancer, um, genital warts and anal lesions. Now, it's most these, these um, vaccinations are most effective before sexual activity starts. So the first dose is recommended in girls aged 11 to 14 years old. And a second dose would be given either six to 24 months after the first. If the um, girl is above 15 years old, then it's recommended that they're put on a schedule for three doses and those three doses should be given within a 12 month period. Now onto influenza, so flu season, we've just had the peak of flu season, it's still lingering about um, and we need to target certain patients for the flu vaccine. So these would include patients who have chronic respiratory disease, for example asthmatics, um, those that have a chronic renal, hepatic, cardiac, neurological disease, patients who have HIV, um, patients who have diabetes. And you want to recommend the seasonal flu vaccination, for example, to patients who are over 65 years old, pregnant patients, residents of a nursing home, healthcare workers, and to children aged two to six years old. With regards to MMR, so measles, mumps, rubella, two doses are recommended. Um, not really recommended for prophylaxis though, because it's just too slow. With regards to the meningococcal vaccine, um, the risk of it decreases with age. So over 25 year olds don't really need to bother with it. It's not recommended for them. There's also pertussis. Um, the other name for it is whooping cough. And all children up to the age of 10 years old should um, receive primary immunisation with DTP. So diphtheria, tetanus, pertussis also with polymyelitis and haemophilus type B um, conjugate vaccine. Now, if you switch your minds back to the year of 2012, it was the London Olympics, but also what happened, um, why that year was significant was that in October 2012, there was actually an outbreak of pertussis. So pregnant women um, were vaccinated. And from my knowledge and from my belief, that programme is still ongoing until further notice. So it's recommend that pregnant women are vaccinated against it. It's also recommended that they have a vaccination for diphtheria, tetanus, pertussis, as we mentioned, and polyomyelitis. Ideally, between um, 28 to 38 weeks of pregnancy. The optimal time, though, would be between 28 and 32 weeks of pregnancy. The main side effect is local reactions. So for the pneumococcal vaccine, you usually give three doses. Um, those that are high risk are very similar to those that you would target for the influenza vaccine. So patients who have a chronic respiratory disease, um, chronic cardiac, renal or liver disease, um, patients over the age of 65, diabetics, patients with HIV. In terms of rabies, 
If you do get bitten, then it's important to wash the area with warm soapy water for several minutes. Um, you want to disinfect the area, might need to apply a simple dressing and it's fine to give a pregnancy. With tetanus vaccine, you need two doses, one before entering school and the second before leaving school. With the varicella zoster vaccine, so patients that have had um, a history of shingles or chickenpox, they are immune, therefore they don't need the vaccine. But it is recommended in patients over 70 to have the vaccine to prevent them, um, as a form of prophylaxis to prevent them from getting shingles. For the adventurous types who, um, for example, decide to go backpacking to refugee camps, it's recommended that they have oral cholera vaccine um, and travellers should be reminded to not have any uncooked foods, even uncooked vegetables, green salads. It's probably the first time you'll be told don't have fruit and veg. Um, fruits, only peeled fruit, fruits that you can peel should, are the only recommended ones. So, for example, your good old banana and water, only drink bottled water um, unless you're going to drink tap water that has been boiled or um, you're going to treat it with sterilising tablets. General um, advice on vaccines, so those that are immunosuppressed or those that are pregnant should not have live vaccines, so live vaccines are a no-no, and um, general side effects of vaccines include GI upset, fever, um, fatigue, and very rarely anaphylaxis. So now I know I've very, 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 very briefly gone through each of the different types of vaccines. Um, but as I mentioned before, I think the main take home message from this video is learning which age group you need to give which vaccines to. So the way that I've broken this down is, it, is in 10 different age groups. So we start off with eight weeks old, then 12 weeks old and 16 weeks old. So it's like starting, it's like, it's like a four times table it starts off with. So eight, 12 and 16 weeks old. Then we jump to one year olds, then two to six year olds, then three years and four months old, very specific, I know. Then we jump to girls aged 12 to 13 year olds, 14 year olds, 65 year olds and 70 year olds. So let's start off with our eight week olds. So the way that I remember it is through five PMR. Five refers to the five in one vaccine that's given. So our DTP, our diphtheria, tetanus and pruritus, polio and haemophilus influenza B. That's our five. The P in five PMR, the P refers to our pneumococcal vaccine, the M to meningitis B and the R to rotavirus. Now, I want you to remember that when pneumococcal goes, meningitis B goes. Meningitis B is the wingman to pneumococcal. Hold that thought because we'll come back to it. Now on to 12 weeks old. 12 weeks old, remember as 5MR. So to begin with, we had 5PMR, now we're on 5MR. 5 refers to that same 5 that we mentioned before. Our M this time is meningitis C. And our R is, again, our rotavirus. So with our five and with our rotavirus, they're the second dose that's being given. With our um, meningitis C, just think, at the beginning, we had meningitis B for eight weeks old. Then in 12 weeks, 12 weeks old, we have meningitis C because B always comes before the alphabet and then it goes C, so B and then C. So now we're on to 16 weeks old. So 16 weeks old, um, think of it as 5 p.m. So we had 5 p.m.r, then 5 m.r, then 5 p.m. So it's the same letters, it's just using them in a different order. So 5 p.m., as we mentioned before, 5 will be the 5 that we referred to earlier. That would be the third dose being given. The P is our pneumococcal and the M is our meningitis B. Because wherever pneumococcal goes, meningitis B goes. They're always, they're together, they're buddies. So that's how you remember whether it will be meningitis B or meningitis C, because if new meningococcal is around, meningitis B has its back. It will be right there. Now we move on to one year old. So I want you to think of one year old. This one year old's name is Harry. So we're going to learn this through the mnemonic. Harry makes mummy pretty mad. So H for Harry, haemophilus influenza B. Harry makes the M stands for meningitis C. 
Now the haemophilus um, influenza B and the meningitis C in this case are given together as a booster. So Harry makes mummy, mummy refers to MMR, pretty mad. Again, we've got our P and we've got an M. P again is our pneumonococcal, M is that meningitis B, it's, it's right there next to it. So for one year old, one year old called Car Harry and Harry makes mummy pretty mad. So now at two to six year olds, flu vaccine. At three years and four months old, we're going to give our second dose of MMR. And now our five piece boy band, Robbie Williams decides to leave, we're down to four. So we give a four in one preschool dose, um, which would be DTP and polio. Then 12 to 13 year old girls, girls, HPV vaccine. Two doses given six to 24 months apart. At 14 years old, we give something called a meningococcal ACWI. It's a C W Y. Um, and the other vaccine that we need to give is we had our four piece boy band. Jason Orange now decides he had he's had enough. So now we give a three in one, our DTP. If you don't get that these are take that references, then shame on you, because they are amazing. Um, at 65 years old, 65, flu vaccine. And we'd also give a pneumonococcal vaccine. Now, there are many different strains of pneumonococcal vaccine. So the one that we've given at, say, eight weeks and 16 weeks, that's called a PCV vaccine. That's just the strain of pneumonococcal vaccine given. Whereas at 65 years old, you give a PPV vaccine. And then at 70 year old, shingles vaccine. So that's the vaccines chapter. Um, hopefully through the little mnemonics, it will help you remember when to give what vaccine at what age. So for example, a question said, when would you give the third dose of the pneumonococcal um, PCV strain vaccine? You can think to yourself, okay, so eight weeks, eight weeks old, it's five PMR, P, that's when my first dose is given. 12 weeks old, it's five MR, no pneumonococcal. 16 weeks, I have five PM. 5 p.m. It's like tea time. Um, but that's when my second pneumonococcal would be given. At one year old, our one year old Harry, Harry makes mummy pretty mad. P, pneumonococcal. There we go. At one year old, that's when I'm going to give my third pneumonococcal PCV vaccine. So hopefully these mnemonics can can help you to remember um, what, what vaccine needs to be given at what age. And hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully it's going to help you in your revision and your learning. And if you did like it, why not give us a thumbs up, give us a like, um, subscribe for all the latest information, give us a share and visit our Facebook page www.facebook.com slash Serena Speaks. And until next time, good luck with your revision and happy revisings.